All right, in this video we're going to see how to solve rational equations of one variable. And we'll start with a nice simple example, 4 divided by x equals 3. So in general, you want to find the least common denominator for the equation. And so that's going to be looking at all the fractions in the equation and find the least common denominator of those. Well, there's only one fraction here, so the common denominator is just the denominator, which is x. Then you're going to want to multiply each term in the equation by the least common denominator. This includes fractions as well as whole numbers or polynomials. So we're going to multiply each term by x. So it'll be 3 times x and we'll do x times 4 over x. Right, so, Because we multiply each term by the same number, the equation is still balanced. But we do introduce a possible issue, and that's why we'll have to do step 5. All right, now that LCD is allowed us to clear the fractions. This looks pretty bad here. Huh? Let's put... So what you're going to do is take the LCD, the common denominator that you multiplied by, and divide it by the denominators. Right? It should divide evenly by all the denominators because it's a common denominator. Uh, so you're going to divide that, and then whatever's left gets multiplied with the numerator. So there won't be a lot of interesting stuff happening with this one. Uh, we'll see it more in the next example. Um, but in this one, we do have one fraction, and it will divide x is the common denominator will be divided by x the denominator and those will just divide to 1. So what are you left with? You'll be left with the 4, right? So x divided by x is just 1 and then you have the 4 is still there and so it's just 4. Alright, so the remaining equation is a polynomial equation and in this case, it's a simple linear equation. It could be quadratic because you know how to solve those. It could be another higher order polynomial equation because sometimes we can solve those with factoring. But uh, we'll just keep it simple here with a real simple linear equation. Uh, all we have to do is divide by 3 on both sides, and we will have solved this. All right, so. So x is 4 over 3. All right, so we do want to validate our answers. And do we do that in the usual way? We take the solution, the proposed solution, and we substitute it back into the original equation. So here's our original equation. And we're going to replace x with 4 thirds. And let's use parentheses. All right, and we want to see if that equals 3. All right, so this is really 4 divided by 4 thirds, right? Uh, which you could think of as 4 over 1 times three-fourths, right? When you divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. So dividing by four-thirds is the same as multiplying by three-fourths. And uh, then you can get 12 over four, or just cancel the fours. Either way, you should get three, and that's what we thought it would be. So, so four-thirds is, in fact, the solution. All right, let's look at the next example. It's a little more complicated. You see we have three fractions here. And when you have sort of higher order polynomials in these denominators, you want to factor to determine the LCD. I'll show you what I mean. If we factor this denominator here, it's going to be x minus 2 times x plus 1. And so when we're comparing these fractions, the uh, 
common denominator needs to include all the factors that are present. So you have to include x plus 1 and you have to include x minus 2. Um, but you don't have to include them twice, even if they occur twice in different fractions. So since x minus 2 is in that fraction and then the second occurrence is in a different fraction, you can just include it once and it'll be covered. So uh, you'd only include it twice if it was, say, squared in the same fraction. So the least common denominator is actually that denominator, x minus 2 times x plus 1. In step 2 again, we're going to multiply each term by the LCD. So let's multiply each of these three fractions by x minus 2 times x plus 1. And it's going to get to be a rather large equation. Let's make it a little smaller. And let's look at how the clearing fractions works here. Again, we take the LCD, the x minus 2x plus 1, and we divide it by the denominator. So look at this first fraction. You see x minus 2 will be divided by x minus 2, and that will go away. But the x plus 1 will still be there, and that will multiply with the 2. All right, so x minus 2 is gone. x minus 2 is gone. And you're just going to have the 2 times x plus 1. With the second one, the part that's in common with the LCD and the denominator is the x plus 1. So that's going to go away. And there's just a 1 here, so you can write a 1 or you can just make it go away because 1 times x minus 2 is just x minus 2. With the last one, everything goes away but the 1. x minus 2 is gone. And then the x plus 1 is gone. So you just have a 1 there. And look at this. You got a polynomial equation. It's again linear. And so we're going to want to distribute to clear parentheses. So we can do 2x plus 2. And don't have anything to distribute with the second one, so it's just x minus 2. At that point, we can combine like terms. 2x plus x is 3x. And 2 minus 2 is 0. If you now divide both sides by 3, you'll see that the solution is 1 third, or so we think. So we need to validate our answer by substituting into the original equation. So let's take a look at that original equation. And let's just just look at the uh, first half there. All right, so let's replace x with 1 third. All right, and 1 third minus 2 is 1 third minus 6 thirds, which is negative 5 thirds. 1 third plus 1 is 1 third plus 3 thirds which would be 4 thirds. Now we have 2 divided by 5 over negative 5 over 3, which is the same as 2 times 3 fifths. Right, so when we multiply, we need to do the reciprocal. And uh, 1 divided by 4 thirds is the same as 1 times 
3 fourths. So what you end up getting here is negative 6 over 5 plus 3 over 4. You get a common denominator of 20, and you'll have negative 24 over 20 plus 15 over 20, which is equal to negative 9 over 20. Okay, so that was just checking the left half. We should get the same thing if we substitute one-third into the right half. So the right half of the equation is here. And we're going to place x with one-third. And we do that with a square one third, we get one ninth. And one third is the same as three ninths. And two is the same as eighteen ninths. So you really have one minus twenty one ninths, which is negative. And if we do 1 divided by 20 ninths, we just get 9 twentieths. And it's negative. So we do, in fact, get the same number. All right, so why all the trouble with checking? Well, in both of these problems, we multiply by the LCD. We've said we can multiply both sides of an equation by any number we want, but you can't multiply both sides of an equation by zero. Did we multiply by zero? Well, it depends on x. We multiplied by an expression that could be zero depending on what x was. Since you could have multiplied by zero, you in fact could be getting a number that's not a solution. Now, if there is a solution, this technique will find it, but the procedure may pull up extraneous solutions, so always check your work.